Hello Shortcuts, how are you? This is Stephen with video one for Shortcuts Records. The list will go out 9 p.m. Wednesday, July 5th. And uh, I think it's a pretty special one. We got some jazz, we got some blues, we got some soundtracks, we got some hip hop, we got some blues. Did I say that? Uh, well, you know, let's crack on. I said blues. Let's talk about the first record. Um, this is a key record in the history of shortcuts. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say that. So I really only started getting into jazz as a result of this club blossoming four or five years ago. Um, and some club members joined and sent me lists and said things like, if you ever see this record, could you let me know? Could you, could you grab it? Could you ask your friends in Shibuya, do they know this? And so Olga and T, you know who you are. Shortly after I met you, you sent me a list and you said, I Quebec, any I Quebec. We want to we want to to see some Ike Quebec, and I had never heard of Ike Quebec or this record. Now I'm going to say this is a rare thing that happens, especially when you're getting on in years. I'll be fifty next year. I can't quite believe it, but it's rare that a record just plunges in to your all time favorites on one listen. <clears throat> and this record did exactly that. This is Blue and Sentimental by Ike Quebec. Ike Quebec was a saxophonist, and on this record he's supported by Philly Joe Jones and Paul Chambers on the rhythm section of bass and drums, but this is important. Grant Green on guitar. So why is this record so special? Why am I going to talk about it for a little while? Well, not only did it plunge right into my top 10 of all time, probably on, on first listen, I think it took about 30 seconds. And the reason is, when you drop the needle on this record, the title track is the first track. There are only six tracks on the record. It begins with Grant Green playing some rhythm chords. And then Ike Quebec begins to play. And it is like his saxophone is breathing. It's this breathy, um, subtle, slow, bluesy sound. I often think of the saxophone as being, being quite an abrupt instrument. Um, it's, it can be, I, 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 of, I can sometimes find the sax to be completely untenable, unlistenable. You know how I feel about John Coltrane, for example. Um, but when I Quebec plays, it is like it's the most beautiful instrument in the world. And he treats the instrument with such respect. And the way that Ike Quebec and Grant Green circle around each other and pay respect to each other's instruments is really, really special. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Grant Green since I listened to this record. And what I, what I think special about Grant Green in particular in this record is he plays rhythm guitar. Now, on a lot of the Grant Green records that I've heard up to now, he's clearly the soloist, and you don't really hear him until he's soloing. But these two guys, um, you know, there's a couple of times when, when Grant Green is playing these beautifully melodic solos, and I Quebec plays piano behind him. They've played together in a couple of other records. There's a, there's a record 
Um, there's a few Grant Green records were out Quebec in the plant in the band, and Grant Green is the leader. Um, I genuinely think this record is astounding, and it's really rare and hard to find. Even though I Quebec get this, I Quebec was an A and R guy for Blue Note. He found talent. He, you know, guys like um, I think it's Art Farmer and all that. I mean, he found he found folk, and he. But in the studio with Rudy Van Gelder, he would often be an uncredited arranger. So this guy is musical to his core, um, and it's so sad. This record was released, I think he, he recorded it in 61. It was released in either 62 or 63. I can't quite remember. Um, but within a few years, he was gone. Lung cancer took him way too early. Um, anyway, I love this record. It's expensive though. So my apologies, I, you know. It just costs because it, because it's never this this copy the, these Japanese copies are the best copies of this that exist because it's never been repressed in anything like the quality of these pressings. I was lucky enough to find two. Obviously, I'm keeping one. Um, I love it. This record, it's so beautiful. If there's anything you do after listening to this podcast or this uh, uh, video. Go and listen to the opening and title track of Blue and Sentimental. It's special. Um, and how do you follow that? I mean, I've got a lot of cool records to come. Um, like this. This is Undercurrent by Bill Evans. Uh, I'm going to show you something that one of our other club members, Ivan, uh, he mentioned how the Australian version of Undercurrent. This is the Australian first press mono version. You can see Bill Evans and Jim Hall. Undercurrent. But in the Japanese version, the obvious is kind of a bit obtrusive in this, but you see the beautiful image of the lady floating. And it's only on the back that you get what this record is. So Jim Hall on guitar, Bill Evans on piano. Similar to Grant Green and Ike Quebec, these two guys play with such a seduction and beauty. Um, it's, a, it's a really lovely record. Um, I'm on a bit of a Bill Evans trip. Now this is, this is a Japan only compilation of a couple of records that Bill Evans did in the early 70s uh, Bill Evans is really popular in Japan. And um, if you look at the, the, the reviews on Discogs or on the blogs of this particular Japan-only compilation, um, the reviews with respect to the sound quality are superb. Um, and having played it myself, there's a real airy, bassy, uh, live quality to the recordings. And those... Uh, 70, 71, 72, 73 albums that this uh, compilation plucks the best songs from are really beautifully produced. Sound quality is fabulous and uh, really melodic. Um, the type of jazz I like, you know. <laughs> Hence why it's on these lists. Um, all right, what do we got next? Let's, let's go with some funk. A couple of funk records that I really love. There's a the, over the course of the life of, of Shortcuts now, there are some records that are becoming kind of Shortcuts legends. Uh, records that have made their way into lots and lots of people's collection just because the feedback and the and the um, the sheer quality of the record. And I think this 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 has now reached that territory. This is Return to Oakland by the Tower of Power. Uh, what a name, the Tower of Power. Uh, uh, you know, a uh, West Coast funk band from the 70s that play an infectious and party sound that, uh, you know, they're just wonderful. But also uh, 
deeply musical and funky and just great. I was reading about this record a while back, um, and there's a, a couple of uh, drumming magazines, magazines that, you know, that specialise in and appeal to to those who like to bang the skins out there. And uh, this record has been inducted into into various um, halls of fame because of the drumming. David Garibaldi. Uh, really unbelievable rhythms. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, just, it's just a great record. Um, Tower of Power. Um, shortcuts legendary status. As, as well... I don't get records by this crew enough for them to to be, I guess, legendary because it's, <laughs> I can't I can't find them very often. Um, but uh, you know, you all know out there how much I love Fred Wesley and the JBs. The JBs being uh, James Brown's backing band from late late sixties, but that kind of amazing sequence of records through the seventies including their own records, but you had Fred Wesley on trombone and you had Maceo Parker on sax. So this is Maceo and the Max, and the record is called Us. Um, so, uh, you know, a little bit later on, this is, I, I think, late 70s, um, there was a period where Maceo was releasing records where uh, James Brown wasn't really involved, he is all over this one. You can hear him singing. You can clearly hear the arrangements. Uh, the, the, the lead track and, and single Soul Power, I think it's called Soul Power 74, is a banger. <laughs> and you can hear them all having a ball. Um, it's, a, it's, a really, it's a really fun record. Um, yeah, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, jazz records from what's called the Diagostini range. So this is uh, box sets of records from uh, jazz collections from uh, predominantly the, the 50s, 60s, into the early 70s. Um, and they were collated into these, into these boxes where you get some additional photos and really, really nice pressings. You can see uh, the detail in the Japanese there. Um, so it's a really, really, really fun record. Um, Jerry Mulligan, of course, being a baritone saxophonist, um, so really mellow and deep and um, a perfect Sunday afternoon record. That And many people would think that, maybe along with Nightlights, is probably being Jerry Mulligan's best record. This one's very different. Albert Iller. This is a seriously heavy pressing of of this. Uh, I think it's a two hundred gram. Um, so Albert Ayler again, saxophonist. He was. Uh, this is his first record for Impulse, um, and uh, it really was was uh, recorded live because on the insistence of John Coltrane, who thought that Albert Ayler was was where it was at, and so. Um, yeah, it was recorded at uh, the Greenwich Village. Uh, it's pretty wild, as you know, the psychedelic uh, imagery would suggest. Uh, oh, this is the second Japan-only release that I have tonight, and this one is a beauty. This is a Japan-only compilation of the best of... I think it's her first five records. Um, I've, I had a look at the track list earlier and I saw some things all the way up. You can see here, it's kind of one of these records. It's like, a, it's got its own kind of internal book with all the lyrics. Um, I put a spell on you, feeling good, taking care of business. I am blessed. Don't let me be misunderstood. What a record that is. Trouble in mind, I hold no grudge. One of my favourites, Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out, How Can I, The Last Rose of Summer. It's one of the best Nina Simone compilations I've ever heard. Um, it's super rare. It's got this really nice textured sleeve. And it's on the original Phillips label. Ah, oh, man. 
Uh, people on Discogs are paying $150 plus for this record. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And it's a really nice image on the front as well. Oh, gosh, this video is getting on. My God, I'm taking up too much of your time. Now, a couple of compilations that I really like. Uh, the compilation to Emmanuel and uh, Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now is a double LP. It's got all sorts of stuff on the inner sleeve. I'll quickly show you. Of course, it's not just that incredible uh, classical music, Ride of the Valkyries and things like that, but it's got the doors, the end. It's got some amazing cover versions. This is the inside. Some really cool shots of that classic movie. Um, each of the sleeves also has those psychedelic images of horror, horror of war by Francis Ford Coppola. Um, yeah, it's a really, really nice compilation. The Emmanuel compilation is like how you imagine a French themed <laughs> porn movies from the 70s might sound. It's kind of guitar, it sounds, it's, it's really thick and mushy sound and uh, yeah it's really fun and interesting uh i can't get through any of these lists without the blues uh more shortcuts royalty these are peter green era pink floyd sheer unadulterated genius in these records particularly this the pious bird of good omen by Fleetwood Mac. What a record this is. Need Your Love So Bad, of course, being being the hit, but uh, I think it's amazing. Um, and English Rose, <laughs> it's got that phenomenal Mick Fleetwood sleeve. I think this is records two and three in the history of early Fleetwood Mac. And in my view, they are completely essential. A uh, couple of others. I might I might do this one first. I love this record. And it, it really isn't that well known. This is Memphis Slim and Buddy Guy. And at the time, I think it was... I can't remember. I think Buddy Guy was touring with the Rolling Stones in Europe. And I, the rumour has it that they that they met in... in I think it's in France... And they recorded this record together. Now, you would think that because it was kind of impromptu and kind of a bit uh, unexpected that it would be a kind of a hash, maybe not very well recorded. Man, this record is a blaze. Buddy Guy's guitar playing is unbelievable in this record. There are times when I think Buddy Guy is a bit restrained, almost to his own detriment. Not on this thing. He's on fire <laughs> in this record. And, you know, there's something about really high-quality blues piano and blues guitar when you get two absolute masters of their craft, like these two are. Uh, yeah, it's a US pressing on the Blue Star label. If you don't know it, seek it out. It feels as well that I can't get through a list these days without there being some B.B. King. He released so many wonderful records. Um, and because he was always seeking out a new band or a new idea, in this case, his backing band were MFSB, who, those of you who know your soul and blues might know, were the, were the house band of Philadelphia Soul. So what you've got here, Philadelphia Soul, as opposed to you know, Detroit or Chicago Soul, were, was more string and horn. So it kind of became kind of more um, more soul blues. And in this case, uh, on this, oh, by the way, I always tell you, look for this, the Pink Probe label. It is like your tick of quality. Um, yeah, to know you is to love you. B.B. King. Really, really lovely record. And I was thinking, how do I finish this list? We're going to go and do something completely different. 
Um, this is Tikal by the Method Man. It's still sealed, which is why it's kind of blaring a little bit. Um, this was the very first record released by a member of the Wu-Tang Clan after Enter 36 Chambers became a worldwide hit. Uh, this record was produced by RZA and is um, a really muggy, smoky, bluesy affair. Um, very different to the brash 36 Chambers. This is this is like the Come Down record. You know, songs like the Biscuits and Bring the Pain. Um, it it was interesting. At the time, the reviews were, were kind of, I wouldn't say lukewarm. I think the quality was was obvious. But in in retrospective, you know, as we kind of come to the point of you know, 20 years later, this record, 30 years later, this record regularly now makes it into the list of the best hip-hop albums of all time. And in some cases, just straight up, best records of the 90s. Um, this is a really good copy too. This is the one I have. This is a sealed uh, limited edition. It's kind of like a smoky color uh, from Def Jam 2014. Look it up. The, it's now sold out. Uh, the sound quality is bonkers good. Yeah, limited edition sealed Tikal by Method Man. So there we have it. Jazz, funk, blues, classical, uh, hip-hop. It's all happening. List one, shortcuts. If there's anything that you want to know more about, ping me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I will uh, be posting this list at 9 p.m. sharp Wednesday evening. If there's anything you'd like, get in. First come, first serve, as always. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.